Thank you, Daniel. Uh, hello, I'm Mickey Gabel from the University of Toronto, and today I'm going to talk about my work making container provisioning a little bit faster. So containers are a popular approach for packaging and deploying software in the cloud, and for a good reason. They're lightweight, they're standardized, and they're very easy to package and deploy. And containers are now increasingly used outside the data center in, setting li in settings like a wide area network, mobile computing, and edge computing. And I'm just gonna call these settings the edge. In this work, we find that container provisioning outside the data center is much slower than it should be, and that state-of-the-art optimizations designed for the cloud make the problem even worse. Our analysis finds that the root cause of the slowdown is design decisions that are inappropriate for edge environments. Starlight is an open source container accelerator that decouples the structure of containers from how we provision them. And the result is much faster container provisioning both in the cloud and outside it for both fresh workers and updates. It has almost no overhead and is backwards compatible with existing uh, workers, registries, and so on. So let's pull back a little bit. What are containers, really? So we can think of containers as a set of isolated processes that have their own file system and other resources, or if it helps, a lightweight virtual machine. Container images are basically a stack of layers that comprise the container file system. This design makes containers very easy to package and deploy. Basically, to develop our application, we start with an existing container, duplicate it, and then basically add our configuration layer on top. Containers are also very easy to deploy to workers. We first get the compressed layers from a registry, which is a generally just a database of container images, we then decompress the contents of those uh, compressed layers and create mount points. And finally, we mount the file system for the container and start it. As our systems become more and more complex, contain the, the speed of container deployment becomes an increasingly important concern. For example, container as a service runtimes like Amazon ECS or Azure container instances would like to deploy containers very fast. Similarly, scaling in function as a service systems, again, may require really fast deployment of containers. We also want to reduce the maintenance window for deploying updates, whether security or just software updates, as well as support free reconfigurations caused by user mobility on the edge. Now, additionally, Edge computing brings its own challenges to this equation, particularly high latency and low bandwidth links that make downloading container images very slow. Yet on the other hand, resource restrictions, resource limitations at edge and local data centers mean that uh, there is usually no local registry or cache in many settings. And moreover, it encourages aggressive repurposing of nodes, which again, increases the need for container provisioning. And as I mentioned before, user mobility means that we may have to reconfigure uh, local data centers and edge data centers very quickly. To see what happens when we provision co uh, containers on the edge, we selected three popular containers and deploy them on a, in, on a 100 megabit per second window with increased latency. The x-axis, I guess this laser pointer doesn't work. On the x-axis, you will see round trip times. And on the y-axis, you will see time. So lower is better. We start with cloud round trip times of zero millisecond, and then move the worker further and further away from the registry until we reach about 300 milliseconds, which is a typical maximum for geodistributed links. The green line shows container provisioning time, user container D which we define as the time it takes to download, decompress the container contents, start the container, but also for the containerized application to report that it is actually ready for work. And for comparison, we also add the download time, which is merely the time it takes to download a package of equivalent size. 
We see two issues. First, provisioning time can triple as we move from the cloud to the edge. But worse than that, we see that provisioning time grows at a faster rate than what should actually happen. For example, faster rate than download times. Now, one approach to optimizing container provisioning time relies on the fact that we don't actually need all the files in a container to start up the application. So what if we just downloaded files on demand? So we tried eStarGZ, which is exactly that, a recent approach that accelerates provisioning in the cloud by starting containers before the compressed layers are finished downloading and then downloading files on demand. This is the blue line. And I'm going to make three observations. First, we observe that eStarGZ is indeed faster in the cloud, but is very slow on the edge. Specifically, we see that like container D, it scales badly when we increase the latency. And maybe worst of all, it turns out that eStarGZ can be even slower than the container D baseline once we pass 150 milliseconds. So, why is container provisioning slow on the edge? The first reason is perhaps counterintuitively the pool-based design used by current approaches. When we deploy a container to a worker, the worker will only request the compressed layers that it doesn't already have in local storage, which makes perfect sense. Why would we download something that we already have? However, on the edge, bandwidth is limited and RAM times are high. The result of these multiple requests is queuing. Many HTTP requests are queued in the registry because registry servers typically serve many clients and they limit the number of concurrent connections. Now, approaches like eStarGZ that download individual needed files on demand make the problem even worse because we, they increase the number of requests. A second issue with the design of containers is their layer-based structures. Since containers are simply, container images are simply a stack of layers, that means we store the metadata for each file in the compressed layers. So approaches like eStarGZ that want to start containers early need to make additional requests to fetch the metadata for each and every layer, resulting in extra round trips. Additionally, the fact that even a small change to the metadata of a file requires duplicating the entire file in a later layer means that there's a lot of inflation when we in container images. So for example, to update Node.js to a later version, we would have to download a container image that is 39 megabytes in size, and that's excluding duplicated layers. However, if we look in the layers, we see that actually only 3.7 megabytes of files are actually new. So we can't fix core design issues by merely changing the worker or only changing the registry. We really have to rethink the whole deployment pipeline, which is exactly what we did with Starlight. We started by designing a new worker cloud protocol that is push-based instead of pull-based and works at file granularity. We then implemented components to support it. The core of Starlight is what we call the, up, the Delta Bundle, which is a new provisioning package that contains all the metadata needed to mount the containers early and contains only contents of files that are new that the worker does not already have. The design of this Delta Bundle is driven by four key decisions. First, the protocol should be push-based rather than pull-based. The worker makes a single request to the cloud and the cloud is now in charge of sending the worker everything it needs. Second, we only send what the worker needs, which means that the worker, when the worker makes this initial request, it needs to be able to specify the contents of files it already has. Third, we send all metadata for all files across all layers before any of the actual payload, the actual contents of any file. Finally, the Delta Bundle works at file granularity instead of container images that work at layer granularity, which allows us to deduplicate the, the, the provisioning package. Let's zoom a little, uh, in a little bit. So suppose the worker has a version one of a container and wants to update it to version two. 
So files, uh, files, some files are, have unchanged. Some files are the same with new metadata. Maybe they've been renamed. And then, of course, some files have entirely new content. Starlight computes these differences in the cloud and then creates an optimized delta bundle for the worker. This delta bundle begins with a table of contents for version two of the container, and it gives a merge flattened view of the entire file system, again, in V2 of the container. For each file, we list its names, its content hash, its attributes, and any other metadata needed to mount it. But additionally, we also list a pointer to the source layer of the file. This means that files whose contents are unchanged, but whose metadata has changed, simply appear in the table with up-to-date metadata. For files that have new contents, we simply include an offset to their compressed contents in the body of the Delta Bundle header. The result is an optimized provisioning package, where all metadata needed to mount is placed in the header of the package body. And the package body itself does not contain any duplicated metadata and only contains contents for new file. Let's go to implementation. Starlight is implemented on top of container D, as in comprised of a proxy in the cloud that mediates between Starlight workers that use the new Starlight protocol and any standard registry uh, server. Suppose we want to provision a container on a worker. We instruct Starlight to pull the container. The snapshotter opens a connection to the proxy and retrieve, and it sends the list of files that we want to retrieve, the list of containers, I'm sorry, the container that we want to retrieve, but also the containers that we already have in local storage. The proxy queries a directory database that contains the list of files in each container, as well as the registry. The registry begins to send the compressed layers, and in the background, the proxy has already received the list of files for the, these compressed layers, and begins computing the delta bundle. Now, it's a key point that the proxy computes this delta bundle individually on demand for each file, instead of inflating the registry with pre-computed packages for every conceivable update. So once the proxy has finished determining the list of files, it sends them to the snapshotter. Now, in the instance of time, I'm going to skip over some of the operations of the file system. And instead, I'm just going to say that we see this in the, by using, by replacing overlayFS with our own starlightFS file system, we're able to start containers early before the file contents have finished downloading. And we do this based on optimizing, sorry, we optimize the list of files to avoid blocking. Again, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip on many details on how we generate the optimized Delta bundle and how we create the Starlight file system, how we collect offline traces and so on. The details are in the paper or you can uh, talk to me. Let's instead go to evaluation. We selected 21 popular containers and deploy each of them on a fresh worker until the containerized application reports that it is ready. We use controlled experiments with Linux traffic control to control bandwidth and round trip times, as well as real world deployments on a real world wide area network that covers three continents. Perhaps the most important question is how round trip time affects provisioning time. So we draw the provisioning time with container D. That's the green line. We also include the blue line, which is East RGC as before. <clears throat> and this dotted black line represents the time it takes to download only the optimized Delta bundle without decompressing its contents or without starting the container. Essentially a lower bound on how um, our provisioning time if we didn't have Starlight's ability to start containers early. Finally, we add Starlight. What do we see? First of all, Starlight is the fastest provisioning approach everywhere, even with cloud round trip times of sub millisecond. Second, because Starlight is push based, its provisioning time does not increase really fast as we increase latency. It is affected 
by the bandwidth delay product, as, as we can see from the comparison of its slope to the black line. However, not more than that, as do E star GZ and container D. Finally, because Starlight can start containers early, it can actually provision workers faster than the time it takes to literally download the data that is needed for the container. So how much faster can we deploy containers on the edge? The previous graph was showing provisioning time for one container. We now show on the y-axis the mean speed up over the 21 containers that we selected. So now higher is better and container D is one. The higher the line, the better. We find that Starlight outperforms both container D and E star GZ across the entire range of latencies. Additionally, as before, we see that Starlight is faster than the, merely the time it takes to download the data. And unlike E star GZ Starlight and container D, Starlight, Starlight scales better with latency. Finally, we might look at the time it takes to provision updates rather than deploy this on a fresh worker. Starlight excels at this and makes such updates four to five times faster. <clears throat> we also measured overhead using YCSB to set up a, a, a workload with two million operations, 50-50 uh, uh, read-write workload, and we used both in-memory and on-disk databases. We observed that Starlight workers start earlier than E star GZ and container D workers, but also finish the work faster, and they reach the same peak performance as the baseline container D and E star GZ workers. Please see our papers for additional experiments, such as results in wide area network, in the cloud, at the effect of bandwidth, scalability, and so on. In summary, we find that the layer-based structures of containers and pool-based design used by current provisioning approaches make container provisioning slower than it should be. We then introduce Starlight, which uses a new provisioning protocol, a new file system called StarlightFS, and a new storage format for compressed, uh, sto uh, for compressed layers. The result is faster deployment on both edge and cloud while being backwards compatible with existing registries, container tools, containers, and workers. Moreover, because Starlight computes the proxy bundle on the fly rather than pre-compute it, this allows us to introduce future optimizations. For example, by collecting traces for containers online, adjusting them online, perhaps predicting and learning the order of file accesses to optimize provisioning size, and even jointly optimize multi-container deployments. So Starlight is open source, and I would be very happy if you tried it yourself and asked me any questions. Thank you very much for your time.